What's going on, guys? This is John from Texas Wilds. Rooster from Rooster Outdoors. And you are listening to the Wiley Rooster Boys Outdoor Podcast. Well, guys, we are back with, uh, it's kind of been a crazy couple of weeks due to the survival challenge that we that we did, and uh, I ended up having to upload that, that last episode late, but this one's going to be a tad different in that old rooster, he ain't able to make this one. Uh, we tried, but he's just, he's got some stuff he's got to take care of. We do have Frankie with us. What's up, y'all? I'm glad to be back, man. Ah, uh, man, I'm glad to get some normalcy back. Because, um, yeah. don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved, <clears throat> excuse me, being out there in the in the woods and everything like that. But now that I'm back home, and it, it's not just that. I've had a lot of stuff going on uh, in the past week, but I'm just, some normal is starting to set back in, and I'm excited about that. <laughs> you know, and it's it's nice being out there and just unwinding and relaxing. You know, we had our phones out there, and I text my girlfriend. I said, I'm like, you know what? I need to do this every so often just because it's so relaxing out here. That's, that's and funny. it's really nice. I think the hardest part is, like, knowing that you have stuff you got to do at home, you know? It, so yeah. when you get back, you're just like, finally, we're home. You know, you got to do all this stuff. or you. It's funny that you said that because uh, I think a few times that we were out there, I told Rooster, I was like, "Man, this is we should we need to do this ever so often because this is like a this is like a reset, you know." Yeah, absolutely, dude. Absolutely, it is a reset. And to me, it's I love being out there, dude. I love doing that. I this is the first year of survival challenge I've done it, but I've been thinking about it for a while. And now that we actually did do it, not only did I learn a lot of what we should have done different but also <laughs> knowing that i can do it and what else i need to prepare for well, i think that we're kind of in the same boat or at least i am i learned while i feel we did pretty good out there i still i i know some of the mistakes that i made and i know <clears throat> some of the areas that i definitely need to work on um to improve in and stuff like that um for instance the that chair that I made while it was comfortable I wasn't using my head um yeah I, I put the backrest on the wrong side and <laughs> the the back leg was a little too long and right. it, yeah that's not a big deal but it just bothers me. My, my OCD bothered me about it cuz yeah. it, it could have been a whole lot more comfortable than that but I overlooked those details and you know, there's there's other things. Um, well, we'll we'll get into that in a little bit, but Heck yeah. Um, I, but like you said, man, it was just it was a great time out there, and yeah, you you, you can't beat it, you know. Uh, you really can't. You can't, dude. You're you're in the middle of nowhere. There's there's literally no worries besides the fact of, you know, you got to get home and do stuff. But once you're out there, you're out there. You're yeah. literally, you know, you know, you always hear people are like, oh, you're one with nature. It's literally like that. You're it really depending is. on nature mm-hmm. to take care of you. But you also got to make sure that you take some sort of, or some sort of action to be able to provide for yourself. Mm-hmm. The only mm-hmm. thing you got to worry about out there is food and water. I mean, yeah. that's it's primal. Um, yeah, I love it. Um, our shelters. Well, I, I guess I can start from the front here. We got there, and um, I, I personally feel like we had a good luck charm as soon as we got there. Because as soon as we walked into our campsite, for those of you that have watched the videos, there was a rabbit just sitting right there in our campsite. And he hung yes. out for a minute until I spooked him off. But that was kind of like a, a good luck thing in my head when we got there. And uh, we quickly... Cleared out some underbrush. I took out a couple of widow makers and uh, we got our camp set up. Went down there fishing. <laughs> I thought we were off to a great start. We had like a pound and a half, two pound bass on like the third, third or fourth, fifth cast. I don't know. But uh, and then Rooster got another one. But we decided, yeah, it's a little guy. We better throw it back. Well, that was a stupid idea on both our parts. <laughs> Turns out that little guy would have been very helpful later on, but we were heading yeah. back to the to camp with our with our dinner, and yeah. out pops the most 
beautiful copperhead I've ever seen. Man, the colors on that thing were, even in the video, dude, those oh, colors man. were popping. I, it's, was, it was vibrant, man. It was. Um, Rooster took a shot at it with his 380, but he missed that snake's head by like an inch. Yeah. I, I don't know how even just the percussion off of that round didn't kill that snake. I right. mean, he barely missed it, but we didn't have the boomstick with us, and so I went back to camp real quick and got the boomstick, and we took care of the snake. And I was yeah. going to skin it, and I even thought about eating it, but Rooster brought up, you know, we killed it with the guns, and therefore it was null and void. Um, but I should have skinned it at least and put it on a walking stick or something. Right. Talking about wildlife, uh, we were out there, man, and around, here, around Nebraska, we have a lot of coyotes, right? So... Mm -hmm. You could just hear them howling, and it was it was pretty cool because you could hear them howling like there was a pack somewhere like on the northwest side of the lake. They were going off, and then after they went off, there was a pack like on the south side, southwest side that would go off, and then when they would howl, then then there was a third pack just like a across chorus. the opposite side. Yeah, that would just start howling. It was, was that, crazy. Was that Friday night? Yeah, that was Friday night. About what time? Um, I want to say it was probably around ten thirty at night. That's maybe pretty funny. 11. Granted, we yeah. were we we're six hundred miles or however many miles apart, but around yeah. that time, Friday night, me and Rooster are sitting there on the on the log by the fire, and we had choruses of coyotes going on around us. <laughs> that, see, that's kind of cool. We were that far apart, but you yeah. know, we were experiencing the same things. Yeah, that's um, awesome. We, you know, we. We did experience like um, some wildlife. We, um, my partner said we had a deer run through the camp um, in the middle of the night or early morning, and then we had you know we we woke up and there was raccoon prints everywhere, and we would hear stuff in the <laughs> woods, you know, moving around and stuff like that. Small animals, probably coons or possums. But another cool thing I noticed is you would hear. There's one main pack that kept howling. And then after a while, it was down to like one pack that you would hear. Mm -hmm. But you would hear them moving closer and closer to the camp oh. with their howls. And then by a certain time, they were like on the other side of the lake already. It was kind of cool to hmm. just listen to them just move. And that's and just listening. I mean, I think me and Rooster sat out there whether it be in our chairs or in the hammocks, we just sat out there Saturday afternoon for a um, couple hours, I think, just listening. Yeah. Just relaxing and listening to nature. And, uh, yeah. it, it, oh, man, it's amazing. And, Dude, it was. <laughs> you know, Saturday night we sit out there in the clearing because uh, in our, our campsite, for those of you that have seen the video, our campsite was kind of uh, canopied by a bunch of trees. And um, so we wanted to go out and get a good look at the stars. So Saturday night, we went out in the clearing. And I'm going to tell you what, it was such a clear night that, I mean, it looked like there was a lid up there. Somebody just poked holes in and the sun was shining through all those yeah. stars. And then you could see the Milky Way all the way north to south. You could see the Milky Way yeah. lighting up the sky. That's um, cool. It was, it was just beautiful, man. But yeah. I, one so, thing I'm a little... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish what you were saying. Well, one of the things I was a little bit disappointed about <clears throat> is... And this, I'm not, this is going to sound bad, but I'm honestly not meaning it to. We only had to start a fire once. Um, that first night that we got there, we got that... Uh, we got there, our tender going and used the ferro rod, the Bigfoot bushcraft ferro rod, and... We got it going within, I don't know, 30 seconds. Dude, and that was one of the quickest fire startups I've seen in my life. It's honestly. that ferro rod, man. It we is that... struggled for probably an hour and a half trying to start this freaking fire, dude. I've been there. It was ridiculous. And we, one of our items was toilet paper. We both agreed we're not going to wipe our butt with, with leaves, you know. <laughs> so we had to go. So we brought toilet paper, and I told him, like, let's try to start this with what we have without using toilet paper. But it came to the end where I was like, 
should we use a toilet paper? And then he's like, well, it is an item. And I'm just like, uh, I just hate to use it. That part of your video, did. man, that cracked me up. <laughs> but hang on one second. Let's, let's take our first break. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all. I wanted to take a moment to tell you guys about one of our sponsors. Not only are they one of our sponsors, but they are an incredible American company. And they sell fire starting gear. The name of this company is Bigfoot Bushcraft. Now, this stuff works exactly as it is advertised. You take one of those plugs, expose the fibers, one strike with that ferro rod, you got yourself a flame. A decent flame at that. And this flame will burn for five minutes or more. So you get that thing put on your tender, and that's more than enough time to get yourself a sustainable fire. So be sure to head on over to BigfootBushcraft.com. Use discount code WileyRoosterBoys, all one word, at checkout for 15% off your order. And every order placed with our discount code help support our show. So get on over there, get you some gear and get you a fire. All right. See, but that's, that was the part about it. You had to, you had to adapt. You had to do what you had to do. I mean, early on, I think it was your partner that was talking to Rooster and I about, he, I think he said something along the lines of, if you have an item out there, it has to be used for what it's used for. And I think we all came to the agreement. No, I think that if this is survival, you use whatever you have, however you need to. And that's right. where that came in. I mean, that's what got right. you all fired. And yeah. But our fire, dude, once we got it going that first night, <laughs> it, it banked itself both nights. All wow. we had to do was stir it up and give it a little blow, and she was roaring to go. Yeah, I, I woke up at 3 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. I was freezing. and You had a little colder than we did, about 10 dude. degrees colder. Yeah, it was. It dropped to like forty-two degrees, Whew. and uh, it was pretty chilly. I forgot to bring a hoodie. I that's one of the things I was like, I gotta bring a hoodie, and I completely forgot about it. Oh and man, I was so cold that I'm just like, screw this, cause I slept in my boxers because my pants were kind of wet, you know. Oh, yeah. I slept in my boxers and a t-shirt, and I got so cold. I'm like, I gotta do something about it. I can't just sit here. Well, no wonder. <laughs> So wow. I got out of my hammock, and there was just one little amber still burning, dude. And I managed to keep it alive and start a fire and just warm up. But it was cold out there. Man, it see, what was <laughs> our first night, man, I didn't sleep hardly at all. I think I slept like an hour that first night. And I think it's because I didn't have a pillow. Um and a lot of you out there, oh, you don't need a pillow. Yeah, you're right, I don't, but it would have been nice. But anyway, so the first night, somehow, I guess my right arm, because I had my sleeping bag inside my hammock. Yeah. I, I guess <clears throat> my right arm got out of my sleeping bag, and it was up against the mosquito net of my hammock. Because wow. I woke up Saturday morning, and I had a dadgum mountain range on the back of my right arm. I mean, I bet there were 400 mosquitoes that came and feasted on my arm. Um, wow. So take note, folks. If you're if you're pressed up against the mosquito net, it does no good. Yeah. Um, but the next yeah. night, I slept in my hoodie, and I had my pillow. And, man, I slept like a rock Saturday night. Oh, my you goodness. You know, while we're talking about shelter, I got to point out the one thing. It's nice to be off the ground with these hammocks. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I don't like is you can have a small breeze go underneath that hammock, and it just makes it that much colder. And that's where an underquilt comes in. That yeah. That's going to be my next purchase. Uh, I actually looked those up last night, and I found a nice goose down one that uh, nice. I'm thinking about getting. But at the same time, this is Texas. I mean, right. I could probably get by with one that's like hollow cotton. You know, instead of spending all that extra money on goose down, right. I, I could probably just go with the hollow cotton and be just as good because it doesn't get well i say that this past winter we got down a negative seven here but yeah that's that's a fluke like a once in a 200 year thing right i, I don't know but yeah i was looking those up and i also yeah, I, something else i learned about hammock sleeping it is so easy in the middle of the night if you got to pee roll over unzip that mosquito net you're good to go <laughs> <laughs> ain't, ain't no need getting out of that hammock. Just do your business. Oh, man. I'd be afraid to just fall out of that right into the puddle of my own pee. 
Um, Man, I was so warm and cozy, and I did not want to get up. And I fought with myself for a good 30 minutes. And I was like, man, just do it. Just do it. So I rolled over, I did my business. And I also found out there's a muscle in your lower back, kind of towards the bottom left. I was rolling to my right. So in kind of my lower back, left love handle area, there must be a muscle there that doesn't like it when you get yourself in position like that. Because I uh-huh. cramped up like you would not believe. I almost made a mess of things because I cramped up so bad. And uh, I'm surprised I didn't wake Rooster up. But, oh, my goodness, <laughs> it was a bad deal. I'm over there, like, almost seizing because of this cramp, still peeing. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it wasn't a pretty picture, folks. Oh, man. But, so let's talk about water. We talked about shelter and we talked about fire. In our struggles with it, but let's talk about water. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention to you guys mm-hmm. is your water looked pretty clear, like oh, yeah. when you filled up the water. Well, not only when it, you know, after it got filtered, but even just grabbing the water from the little pond or whatever mm-hmm. you had there, um, it looked pretty decently clear. It really was. And honestly, <laughs> we probably could have drank it straight from the tank. And, you know, risk, what was that called, Gerardia? Is that something like that? But Yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't really want to have to get sick and yeah. all that out there. But yeah, what's funny we, is we had the same idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had those, uh, what are those called? Uh, Mine was, uh, it's from Membrane Solutions. Uh, it's a six liter, like a rubberized pouch almost, that yeah. comes down to a, it's essentially a life straw. And I'm going to tell you what, that sucker, it, 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 it filling up a 12-cup percolator takes a while through that life straw. It does. It does. Um, and you know what? That's a nice system right there because I was super skeptical when we were talking about this. And we, I talked to you guys about it before, and Rooster also, I talked to him about it. I'm like, I don't know if I just trust that system to just, you know, clean the water and filter it. I, was I might hesitant. end up boiling it also, you know. But mm-hmm. honestly, um, our water, you couldn't see maybe. You couldn't see 10 inches under. Really? It was so muggy. Yeah. It was so muggy. And that's how Nebraska water is because of the mud and stuff like that. Some lakes are sandy, but most of them are muddy. And, you know, it was green, muddy water. And when it filtered it through, it was clear. Really? I'm like, yeah, it just came out completely No, no tint clear. at all? No tint at all. That's completely amazing. Completely clear. And, um... What, what, uh, what was y'all, what brand was y'all's filtration? Was it the same? I don't remember which one it was. It was my partner's. That, it looked like the uh, same coloring, same design. It may have been the same yeah, brand. I think it might have been the same brand, because it almost looked identical, honestly. I think your bag was bigger, but that's about it. Yeah, so anybody but, out there from Membrane Solutions, you, you know, y'all want to hook us up, but, you know, <clears throat> while the <rooster> boys, gmail.com. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I, I was impressed with that, man. I was really impressed with it. You know, we went through um, about five of ours, those six liter bags, and I, the mistake. I think we went through like two or three. Really? The mistake yeah. we made was we <laughs> we didn't get water first. When we got to camp, we just started working like Friday evening. Right. We just started working. And by the time we got done, we we're like, Oh, I need water, you know? And we had to walk yeah. all the way to the water to get, to get water, but it wasn't too bad. Um, what really, we all achieved all three of the things that, um, that we set out to do food, water and shelter or uh, food, water and fire. Yeah. Uh, some a little easier than others. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait, in my defense on the fire, though, it had just rained probably mm-hmm. 30 minutes prior to us getting to our spot. See, that's that's something I would have mentioned. And here, here's the thing, is we got there, it, I'm like, there's tons of firewood, there's tons of, tons of brush and just twigs and stuff, and I was like, this is going to be perfect. This is going to be cake to start a fire. And then when I started getting smaller stuff like dry leaves and stuff, I started realizing that the dry leaves aren't so dry anymore. Mm. And I was just like, because we didn't have a huge heavy rain to where it would just like saturate everything. So I still had my hopes up. 
But when we were trying to get dry grass and dry leaves, and then I started realizing that some of that moisture got absorbed by some of them leaves and that dry grass, I was like, man, this might not be so easy. And we struggled. Like I said, we struggled a good hour and a half to try to start a fire. Man, that, that's rough. And it's it's so irritating and infuriating whenever it's you know you need that fire and you just can't get it going. I've I've been there. I've been there, and it sucks. I hate it. And we were fortunate. Uh, it was pretty dry conditions for us, um, for the most part. And you know, I I think we pretty me and Rooster. I think we pretty much accomplished everything that we set out to do um, on that weekend. Um, yeah, I, th- I think. Let's see. We made chairs. We made a table. Made lots of uh, eating utensils. I made plates. Um, I don't know. I think we made a couple other things. I know I whittled for a while. I made my daughter a fish. But um, yeah, <clears throat> I know initially we said that we were going to have the viewers decide. And we couldn't decide on how long. <laughs> but we figure at this point uh, enough people have voted uh, in this past week that um, I think we can go ahead and do the results here but before we do that let's take our last break we'll be right back okay so the results are in if i had a drum roll sound effect i'd be playing it right now but i don't Uh, (laughs) so you guys have spoken the winners of the 2021 texas versus nebraska wilderness survival challenge texas baby yeah, yeah. Boo. <laughs> boo. boo hiss, boo hiss. <laughs> Texas took it. Oh man, I got I got to give it to you guys, man. You did you guys did obsessionally well. Honestly, I I felt just by watching your guys' videos and watching watching ours and what we went through that you guys hit it like on the mark, dude. You guys did what you needed to do, fire water and food. And and then you built a chair and a table. I was like, dang! Like these guys had time to build furniture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was fun, man. And yeah, you know, we just we had a game plan and we knew we knew what we wanted to put into motion, and it took off from there. Yeah, um, I wish we would have been able to stay a little bit longer. Maybe redeemed ourselves a little bit better. We had a tough time even finding like bait to fish with you know i wanted to find some night crawlers couldn't find them bluegill weren't biting so our next option was cat fishing at night and that that pulled us through man that catfish that's what i was going to bring up i am very jealous that you guys got catfish because <laughs> don't get me wrong bass i like eating bass but catfish oh man yeah but also i gotta ask why why the cast iron um why not just cook over the fire? I just, um, I'm curious about well, that. Well, it, it depends. Like, honestly, if we would have ca- caught some bluegill, we would just cleaned them out and just cooked them whole right there. You know, that would have been easy to just right. pick the meat off the bones. But when it came to catfishing and filleting them like that, cast iron is a lot easier because it just flakes, man. When you cook it, it just flakes off, especially with no, no oil. Yeah. The fish just flakes off. So, like, cooking it over a smoke fire, you probably could have done that. But I pr- I prefer filleting them, skinning them, mm-hmm. um, to just cooking them over smoke. Okay. Not only that, but it's, it's faster to cook it on cast iron than to smoke it. Oh, I absolutely. Think. I mean, <laughs> the, the fish that we put on to cook whenever we started, but, and you guys that saw the video, um, us building the chairs, you guys probably saw, like, it might have been a minute or two minutes worth of footage that you guys saw of us building the chairs. But no, that was like a three hour, three, four hour thing. Um, yeah. Building the chairs. And we put the fish on to smoke and we didn't realize that the fire had, had kicked up while we're working, you know? So, <laughs> so we get done, we get done with our chairs and we go to eat. Cause you know, by this time we're pretty hungry. And that that smaller bass that we had, it turned into jerky, man. 
<laughs> but it was still food. Funny. Man, we That's just got so, so caught up in building stuff that man, yeah. I just getting lost in getting lost in it out there is. If anybody out there has never done anything like this, if you've never gone out, and you can take food, you can take whatever, you can take whatever you want. I'm not going to say that's not going to take away from the experience, but personally, whenever you have to find your own, you have to work for your own food, and you have to do something for your own water, it's, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn the yeah. limits you can get pushed to. Um, but for those of you that have never done anything like that, I encourage you to do it. Don't go out there and try try to go, you know, crazy all at once if you're if you don't have much experience in it if you don't you have much experience you're gonna have a bad time right um but definitely you know get yourself in tune with nature and i will say while we had food for dinner the first night lunch the second day and dinner the second night that saturday when we were building everything and just that little bit of fish you know, on these survival shows, you see people always talk about, oh, I'm, I don't have energy, I feel bad, I'm just right. blah, blah, blah. I never really understood that until Saturday. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one point I was just going to bring up, dude, is the fact that, you know, we, we were, we, and me and my partner only stayed there for 24 hours. You guys stayed, what, 36 maybe plus? I think it was 42, 44 total. Yeah. See, and... We stayed there for 24, and honestly, the only f food we ate was that one catfish that we caught. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I noticed. Like, after we paddled back in the canoes and loaded everything up in the truck, it's just like, it really takes it out of you. Because from the moment you get there, you start gathering firewood. You make Yeah, you work. Yeah. You're burning all this energy, and if you don't take in any protein you're gonna get tired i was tired dude after 24 hours i was like holy smokes it really takes it out of you it was like i was said earlier you know we just sat there for hours and just listened to nature that's because we we had to um yeah after we built all that stuff and just we used every ounce of energy we had at that moment and at, at that time that we we were spent i mean we were exhausted and yeah. we had to muster up the energy. See, fortunately, earlier that day, whenever we went out to get that first fish of the day, we set out some set lines for uh, for dinner. And I'm glad we did because we we were having a hard time fishing. Uh, for as much as we were fishing, it mm -hmm. was it was hard. They weren't biting. And yeah. if you guys see that last fish that I pulled in off of that set line I put out there, I thought it was some kind of joke, man. <laughs> that that little bitty fish, I bet it wouldn't even have registered on the scale. <laughs> but it was food, yeah. so yeah, you know what you can't argue about it. <clears throat> it I was... think that our spot that we picked, we struggled with catching food too. And honestly, I, I, I now that I look back and that I was able to spend that time there, I realized that the habitat around there wouldn't have been good for. Um, for bluegill and stuff like that, honestly, because it was we wanted bluegill. It's kind of the, yeah, it was kind of like the inlet, and it was very muddy, you know, not a lot of vegetation, and it's like there's probably not a lot of cover for bluegill and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when we went to check it out before we did all this to find out where we we're gonna camp, and it looked great, dude, because there was bass just jumping around everywhere like crazy. And then the day that we go, like, it's just quiet. The freaking... Man, that sucks. <laughs> the lake is just glass. Nothing was jumping. But... Oh, man. Well... Yeah. I, I, yes, <clears throat> yes, it was a competition. And, you know, Texas pulled this one off. Um, but I think, as I've said in the video, I think the most important thing is that we all went out there and we just had an awesome time. Um... We got in touch with nature for you guys 24 hours, us a little longer. Um, and, you know, just being in the outdoors, being in God's creation, that's what I absolutely love. And if I don't know if any of my, <clears throat> any of my subscribers on the Texas Wells channel, I don't know if there's a notification that's already went out. There's a video that I have already uploaded, and it's going to premiere Wednesday. Um, 
that video is what happened immediately following the 9 a.m. cutoff of, uh, of the challenge. As soon as 9 a.m. hit, the challenge was over, that part was done, and we did a little something special that we wanted to, to film and share with you guys. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but um, I think there's a certain number of folks out there that will really enjoy that video. Uh, was, it, was it the post-challenge breakfast conversation? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, it, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but me personally, I like watching stuff like that. I don't want to give too much of it away right now because, uh, well, <laughs> I want people to watch it. But uh, Right. <laughs> um, but, man, it was great. And we're we're going to need you to somehow get down here to Texas and come out with me and Rooster sometime. Man, you read my mind, dude. You read my mind because watching your guys' video and stuff, I'm just like, man, that'd be so awesome to just go down to Texas again and just do this mm -hmm. scenario, you know, together. Maybe not necessarily just limit our items or anything like that. No, but I, 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 he and I spoke about it. I think the next time we do this, it should, there's really no limits on what you take. I mean, yeah, because overall, I honestly don't even think I used all the items I took. Um, I right. and I found out that I didn't need some of the stuff that I took. And I think Agreed. rooster rooster felt the same way about some of the stuff he brought. Um, but I will say that cordage, that tarred bank line for those of you out there who struggle with finding a good cordage, that tarred bank line is amazing. Um, I've seen that. It's cheap. It's strong. Very easy to work with, but it'll stay in the crap out of your hands. But yeah, that's yeah. I'm sold. That's all. That's the only kind of cordage I'm using from now on. Yeah. Um. But <clears throat> I do know that another video set that Rooster and I are going to try to start working on is going to be like wilderness cooking or catching cooks or and it's it's going to be more than just um what we catch to cook we're going to have more stuff to it than that but we've been we've been brainstorming <clears throat> some ideas off of each other and we got some we got some plans for the for the future and you guys are not going to want to miss that because it's if you guys are anything like me i love watching stuff like that absolutely um, i've actually have plans of myself doing uh some catch and cooks and stuff like that myself yeah so. It's, it's fun, you know? It's like a cooking show from the woods, you know? Uh, dude, do you have any idea how satisfying it is to catch your own food? Oh, yes. Absolutely. It's so satisfying, you know? It's like for anybody out there that's never caught their own food, which if you're listening to them, most, most likely you have because mm -hmm. obviously you're listening to an outdoor podcast, but man, it's so satisfying. It makes your food taste that much better. <laughs> oh, it does. And a lot of people don't like that gamey taste, but I, I like it. Um, and that's not to say I like it to be extremely gamey, but right. it, let's take, uh, hogs and deer, for example, to me, if it's st strictly speaking to meat, I would rather take a doe over a buck and I'd rather take a sow, a sow over a boar because yeah. the females, they're not near as musky. They don't stink as much when it comes to pigs. They don't stink as much as the males, and generally, the meat is more tender um, I agree. than the males. With does for sure. Because back me up on this, you can't eat antlers, you know. What? Right. <laughs> I mean, come on. If you're if you're going out there for food, there's no sense in letting four doe walk just to right. get a buck, you know. Yeah, yeah. But. That's how it is in Nebraska. Around a lot, a lot of my, you know hunter friends yeah they're out there to get that trophy buck also but you know if, if it's a hard hunting season and you know a lot of these guys go out there hunting to make jerky and fill their fridges full of deer meat because deer meat's amazing dude oh it i is. love it oh it's man. so good but ain't, ain't no you know, they, yeah and a lot of them will shoot a you know a big doe and try to fill the fridges or the freezers you know yeah i would definitely choose doe over buck but and that's not to say that I haven't shot some buck, but, you know, it right. is what it is. Sometimes you you hunters out there, I'm sure you guys can relate. You're sitting in the blind or however you hunt, and you see that buck come out, and your heart just starts pounding. 
and sometimes it's pounding so hard you can't even hold that gun straight. <laughs> but right. you know, sometimes the adrenaline takes over. Yeah. But I think we're gonna wrap this one up here, guys. Um it's it's been so much fun. Um the, I can't wait to do it again, honestly. I hope that all the hype that we've put into this build up for this challenge, I hope that it paid off and you guys enjoyed all of our videos. Um it was a lot of fun for me, a lot of fun for Rooster. Frankie, I'm sure you had a blast too. Oh yeah. But um yeah, uh, I think Rooster will be back next week and I'm gonna give you guys a little a little sneak peek. We're gonna have a Halloween special episode with uh with a special guest and <laughs> tell you what, y'all are not gonna wanna miss those stories. Uh this actually became an idea about two weeks ago, I think, two or three weeks ago. We decided to do a Halloween special. So don't miss that. You know, be sure to check that out. Be sure to check out Frankie's YouTube channel, One Fish at a Time. Um, Texas Wilds, Rooster Outdoors, Wiley Rooster Boys, you know, all of our channels. Throw us some love, throw us some support, and um, yeah, follow us along on our adventures. <laughs> so until next time, guys, we love y'all. God bless. We'll see you later. Later.